The time has finally come for a new Fallout game. Like previous entries, Fallout 76 is a massive game filled to the brim with RPG systems and mechanical details, many of which aren't explained in detail. Add that on top of a new multiplayer functionality, and it's more than likely that you've got some questions that need answers. Fortunately, we're here to help with our collective knowledge, having each played the game for a couple dozen hours. In this feature, we'll go over tips you should know about the game's survival and progression systems, as well as call out important details to keep in the forefront of your mind as you play. Once you leave Vault 76, you are free to go anywhere you want. But don't let that freedom go to your head, as you most definitely lack the resources needed to survive. If you're not careful, you'll likely end up somewhere high-leveled and dangerous. We strongly recommend at least doing the first couple of quests in the main story, which act as an extended tutorial and also provide you with a ton of important supplies and blueprints. The story missions in the Overseer's Camp, the Town of Flatwoods, and the Morgantown Airport teach you about workbenches, diseases, and how your camp works. You'll also gain a ton of basic weapons, ammo, aid supplies, recipes, and plans for building. After Morgantown, you'll be in much better shape to start exploring freely. Keep in mind that the main story is in general a great way to get new stuff and learn the game, so it's a good idea to hop back in and do it every once in a while. The camp is a new feature in Fallout 76 that acts as your own personal base that you can use to rest, repair equipment, and eventually build your own home. Because it's technically a camp, that means you can move it to anywhere you want on the map, for a small fee of course. But don't fret, as stuff you've already crafted is stored and can be replaced at no cost. You only have to worry about building something like a workbench once. Traveling to your camp is always free, so try to place it strategically. That means putting it near resources, existing crafting benches, and water until you have unlocked crafting stations and water purifiers to do the work for you. Even if you aren't interested in building up your camp, it's worth creating a basic one that has all the stuff you need, like a cooking station, workbenches, and a stash. It's also worth noting that you can't just set up your camp anywhere you please. It needs to be in a location that isn't named. In addition, if you want to preserve your stuff from the elements, make sure you store your stuff in your stash. Like previous Fallout games, your character's inventory limit is going to be a constant obstacle, because when you're carrying too much stuff, your action points are sapped just from moving around, compared to past games where you just move incredibly slow. Because of this, your stash at home base is one of your most valuable assets. Always have a stash in your camp and use it to store stuff to make space for yourself. Only you can access your stash, so anything you place in there is safe from the hands of unfriendly players. You'll notice other stash boxes throughout the world and in other people's camps, but using them will only access your stash and not anybody else's. If you're too far away from your camp and need to know where to look for a stash, there'll usually be one at a train station or Red Rocket. Always throw whatever junk you've picked up into your stash. There's actually a command that instantly offloads all of your junk in the stash menu. Once all your junk is in your stash, you have access to all of it at any workbench for crafting, so you don't need to worry about carrying it around everywhere you go. Do keep in mind that the stash does have an item limit. It's not possible to build a second one, so eventually you're gonna have to start getting rid of stuff. You can't put off spring cleaning, not even in Fallout 76. Weapons and armor conditions return for Fallout 76 after having been absent from Fallout 4. However, unlike Fallout 3 and New Vegas, where you could just use another armor or weapon of the same type to improve the first condition, you need specific junk to repair your gear in Fallout 76, much like how you upgrade mods. If you're missing materials, you can tag them for search, just like in Fallout 4, to help you find what you need when scavenging. While armor takes a little time to bust, Weapons can degrade rather quickly, so make sure to keep an eye on them, lest they break in the middle of combat. One of the newest additions to Fallout 76 are diseases, and they can really harm you if you're not careful. You can get them from pretty much anything. The obvious comes from enemies labeled as disease, such as a disease rad roach, which can easily infect you by touching you. When you see an enemy marked as diseased, it's always best to shoot them from a distance. You wouldn't think it, but beds have a high chance of giving you disease, specifically any bedding that's not raised off the ground. You can also catch diseases from eating rotten or raw food, swimming in water, or even just walking in certain areas that contain airborne diseases. Waterborne diseases can be avoided by wearing certain equipment like hazmat or spacesuits, and airborne diseases can be avoided by wearing gas masks like the fire breather helmet. If you're unfortunate enough to catch a disease, your options are to either wait it out or cure it with medicine. 
Waiting for a disease to go away on its own takes anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour depending on the disease. Curing a disease is obviously the preferred method, but cure disease, which is what the item is called, can be tough to find. You can craft it of course, but you gotta make sure you have the materials for that. Alternatively, if you're in a real pinch, you can set up your camp and just wait to die and respawn, which will cure your disease. Power armor is high level equipment that comes in handy later on. But in your early runnings, you'll come across plenty of power armor chassis out in the world. But they'll only have a few pieces of armor on them. These pieces are usually around either level 25 or level 40, so you can't even use them most of the time. But don't ignore these just because you're at a low level, as you can still take advantage of them. Remove all of the armor pieces attached to the power armor, and if you have the space, bring it back with you to store in your stash. After that, hop into the power armor chassis, which even without any armor plates attached, still gives you a defense bonus and boost to your carrying capacity. It's worth noting that once you hop into a power armor chassis, it's yours, which means you can store it in your inventory or place it in your stash. Taking the time to scavenge power armor pieces early on will put you in a better place when you reach the appropriate level to actually use fully decked out power armor. Crafting is an important part of the Fallout experience. After all, if you're going to survive out in the wasteland, you need to leverage all that useless junk you grab into functional items. As you explore, you will find new plans and recipes that will expand your repertoire for craftable items. Now you may think these will get added to the workbench recipe list upon picking them up, but you'd be mistaken. To unlock them in your crafting list, simply pull them up in your Pip-Boy and confirm them in the notes section of your inventory. Fallout 76 is a multiplayer game, so interacting with other people is a major component. But you must be wondering, what's possible with other people? First off, there is in-game voice chat that's area-based, letting you hear people close by. Direct communication is a useful tool for asking players if they want to trade or help you out. If you don't want to hear other players, you can always turn it off in the audio settings, and it's still possible to communicate with visual emotes. Trading with other players is as simple as walking up to them and pressing a button. You get a full look at someone's inventory and can request specific items you're interested in. Of course, there's also PvP. You can't attack or be attacked by other players until you reach level 5, which is meant to prevent spawn camping outside Vault 76 and killing all the newcomers. Once you can attack others, you'll notice that when you first start shooting players, you'll actually be inflicting a reduced amount of damage. Again, this is meant to prevent random people from just killing you or from you killing them. If the other player attacks back, the two of you will have officially engaged in combat with the damage safety turned off. While it's difficult, it is possible to kill a player who isn't fighting back, but doing so is considered murder. That puts a bounty on your head and replaces the icon on the map with a bright shiny red star letting everyone know where you are. Any player can then murder you and be rewarded with a bounty of cats, which comes out of your personal supply. You'll get some rewards from the bodies of dead players, but looting them isn't going to score you their armor or weapons. Instead, you will only get their junk and crafting supplies. While this may not seem like much, scoring a large supply of junk can be a nice boost for you, while losing a lot of junk you just spent the last hour collecting can be pretty devastating. Luckily, your dead body will be marked on the map, so you can recover your stuff regardless of what killed you. When an encounter stops being fun in games, you can block a player by finding them in the social menu and then flagging them. Alright, we covered a lot of the big stuff, but there's a lot of smaller stuff packed into this game that's worth being mindful from. Here's some tips that we thought were pretty important, but not enough to warrant their own section. Hollow tapes still play when you enter a loading screen, but you no longer hear them. So if you have a tape playing, wait before you leave or enter a building or fast travel until you're done listening to it. Always carry a hazmat suit with you. There are tons of areas of heavy radiation that can quickly kill you if you spend time there, so a hazmat suit is essential. That and they can also prevent airborne and waterborne diseases. If you find an instrument, take 30 seconds to play it and receive the well-tuned status, which grants you a bonus 25% AP regeneration for one hour. Be warned, if you murder someone while in a party, your teammates can start attacking you right away. You won't be able to attack them, however, because you're on the same team. While it requires further research on our end, you could technically use this to game the murder system. Use a tinker's workbench to bulk your materials, which will condense them and reduce the weight, freeing up more space in your stash. If your meat, veggies, or fruit spoil, don't eat it, but also don't throw it away. You can convert them into fertilizer. Sleep at the start of every play session until you get the well-rested icon. Being well-rested means you get a bonus to XP for a short while. You can swap the Pip-Boy between two viewing modes. The standard one takes up your entire view, but the alternate version lets you see what's around you while navigating menus. 
While building the camp, many objects in the world block larger saved bases from being placed. Fortunately, you only really need one point of contact, and then you can float your entire base in a single set of stairs. Even if you don't like VATS, it's still very good for quick headshots with bolt-action rifles. Finally, this is a PC-specific tip. Remap the grenade button if you plan on capturing using Shadow Play. It's currently set to left alt, and trying to start and stop shadow play will have you accidentally throw a grenade. Uh, also, it's just kind of an awkward key to put the melee grenade on in the first place. Those were all our tips for Fallout 76. It can be a confusing game, so hopefully these tips helped you guys out. If you have any tips that we missed or useful information, please put it down in the comments below, and hey, if there's enough, maybe we'll make another one of these tips videos. Have a great day.